A common way to continue to support legacy code is to provide a method stub. A stub is a proxy function that legacy code calls instead of the latest version of the function. It honors the legacy contract by accepting the expected number of parameters, maybe none, and calling the latest version of the function with default values. This lets legacy code continue to work while allowing new code to make use of the latest version of the function. Let's look at how we can stub the draw function. The basic pattern of creating a stub is to rename the latest version of the function to something unique. In this case, we're calling it draw new. Then create a function with the same name as the legacy code expects with the parameters the legacy code expects. In this example, we're only going back one version to the one that doesn't include the colors, but does include the four numeric values. If we had taken the time to create a stub function for each version of our function, we'd end up with as many stubs as we had versions. This can become very cumbersome. I'm only showing one version back to show how a stub works. Legacy code can continue to call the function by the name it expects, and new code can call the latest version directly. What's the difference between this approach and just creating new independent functions? The biggest difference is maintainability. Notice how the draw function only has one line of code, essentially passing off all processing to the new function. If we left the original code in draw and created an independent draw new function, we would certainly have duplicate code. Duplicate code is a breeding ground for maintenance nightmares. We want to avoid that at all times. A stub function should only be one line of code that calls the enhanced version of the original function. It should supply the original default values for newly added parameters. If you do anything else, it ceases to be a stub and becomes part of a function chain that can be very difficult to debug and maintain. Let's look at the results of using this stub function. We get our two rectangles, one with what our graphics department thinks colors should be, and one with the default silver and black. The stub function works for just one version back of legacy code. That's because it still expects the four numeric values for position and size. As mentioned earlier, we would have had to create a stub function every time we broke the contract with legacy code. We've only created one stub. Stub functions are generally just a stopgap measure. They're useful if you have an immediate need for new functionality and have little time for full regression testing of existing code. You can honor the contract expected by legacy code and make minimal additions to the function for your immediate need. This approach is much better than making a new function that is essentially a copy of the original code, but it's not the ideal solution in the long term. Let's talk about some other problems with this approach. One is that it can be difficult to determine which version of the function should be used with any new development. Most programmers will copy existing code blocks when making additions or changes to an application. It is very likely that a new member on the project may not use the latest function definition to make use of the latest features. They may copy the pattern used by a page that references a legacy version that doesn't make use of latest features. Adding a stub dramatically increases the need for internal documentation. Another downside is the fact that multiple versions of legacy code are not supported. Consider our legacy code prior to the version that accepts four numeric values. It is still broken. If we have legacy code that is calling multiple versions of a function with different contracts, a stub function will not address that problem. Finally, consider this example. A new member on the team may make the following function call. What results will they get? Can you figure it out before seeing it in the browser? Look at it and pause the video if you need to. Here comes the result. We did get a square, but not with a red border. We got a square with a default black border. It makes sense once you think about it. The new person called the draw function, not the draw new function. They use the stub instead of the latest version of the function. The stub doesn't expect any color parameters, so they're just ignored. Then the stub calls the draw new function with default color parameters. This demonstrates precisely why internal documentation is very important when employing stub functions. Even then, mistakes like this will happen. Creating a stub function is a quick approach when you're under the gun. The steps are pretty simple, and you can add new functionality with little worry about breaking legacy code. It can be confusing for new team members, though.